All right, Mr. Myas is here, and in this video, I'm going to go over graphing some composite functions, and we're going to graph these composite functions using the step-by-step -step method that we've been going over in class. We're also going to do the squaring and the absolute value today, so you can see what those do to graphs. Um, we're going to, again, we're going to do the step-by-step -step in, in the, our, our method is going to be step-by-step, -step. so what I mean by that is we're going to do um, one graph. And then we're going to go on to another graph to see how it changes. And then finally we're going to get, and then we're going to do every other step that we need to do to make sure that we get the right graph. So again, these are just sketches. Sometimes it's not going to be the exact graph, uh, but it gives us a really good idea of what the graph looks like. So later on we can kind of analyze the behavior of the graph for max, mins, increasing, decreasing, concavity, and all the other kind of things that we need to take a look at in the graph. So... We are going to start with f of x equals 2x minus 1 all squared plus 3. And we're going to start with the inside. One of the things to remember when we're graphing composite functions is that we want to start inside and work out. So it's the inside out approach. And what I mean by inside is whatever's inside the parentheses or inside the power. So if we're doing a... a an exponential, we would the inside we would consider as the power here. Whatever's inside the absolute value, whatever's inside the um, logarithm, inside the trig function. So that's what I mean by inside out. So let's start here with 2x minus 1. So we're going to graph y equals 2x minus 1. And we know that that's a line with a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. So let's start with the y-intercept of negative 1. And then we're going to use slope of 2, so up 2 and over 1. 2 over 1. And we want to remember that here the x-intercept is going to be 1 half. It's just going to be important in our next step when we find the, when we do the square of that. Okay, so now we're going to square this graph. And if you recall, when we square a graph, squaring a graph takes the graph and it curves it to increase its slope. And um, I say slope kind of loosely. We're not really having a slope, but as we look at when the graph increases or decreases, the, the, the slope of the graph, it's going to increase quicker. So that's why we have a curve. So we're going to take this. Anything that's below the x-axis is going to now be above the x-axis, but it's going to be curved. So in this case, it's going to look very parabolic. And it's going to start its curve. In this case, the vertex is going to be at the x-intercept of where it was here, so at 1 half. So 1 half is our x-intercept, which is also our vertex. And we're going to increase this like that. In this case, I believe our y-intercept is at 1. Okay. And we can get our y-intercept by plugging in 0, and we get negative 1 squared, which is 1. We can also get it over here. Over here, our y-intercept is 1, and if we square that y-intercept, we get 1. So whatever we do in our previous graph, whatever the y-intercept was in our previous graph, we can square that number, and that'll be our y-intercept in our next graph. So let's, um, let's go on, and the last step here is a translation, and it's a translation of 3 down. So we're going to take our graph here, we're going to move everything down, three units. So our final picture, we'll take the vertex and move it down three units. So down here, I'll move this red here to be our last one. And then our y-intercept was at one, so we're going to move that down to negative two. And we know this is symmetric. And so this is our graph of y equals 2x minus 1 squared plus 3 using a step-by-step -step 
composite approach. And of course, we know that we can use a translation approach from y equals x squared, uh, but this is a different approach using a step-by-step -step graphing composite approach. So let's take a look at how that might work for something a little bit more complicated. The absolute value of e to the x minus 2 plus 1. So we've been working with parent graphs. Um, we call them the 12 basic functions. And we've been using these parent graphs. So we're going to start with a parent graph of y equals e to the x which is our exponential function, our natural, our exponential function. So this one, if you remember, goes like this. It's an exponential graph that crosses through 0, 1. That's our y-intercept. So now we're going to translate that down two units because we've got e to the x minus 2. So we're going to go e to the x minus 2. So we're going to do y equals e to the x minus 2. We're going to translate that down 2 units. And the easiest thing here for us to remember is that we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So we're going to, instead of being at y equals 0, our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 2. I'm going to draw a dotted line to signify that. And we're going to draw our exponential. So now that we have e to the x minus 2, we want to apply the absolute value to that. So something to remember what the absolute value does is the absolute value takes all the values that were negative and makes them positive. But it doesn't change the curvature at all of the function. So here when we did a square, it changed this from being linear to being curved, whereas the absolute value does not change it. So if it were linear, it would stay linear. Since we have a curve here, it's not going to change the slope of our curve. It's going to stay the same, only now it's going to make everything positive. So anything that was below the x-axis now is going to get reflected above the x-axis, including the asymptote. So here, our asymptote was at negative 3. I'm sorry. <laughs> I almost messed that up. Our asymptote should be at negative 2. I set it and then drew it at negative 3. Okay. So our asymptote here was at negative 2. But since now we have an absolute value, our asymptote is now going to be at positive 2. So I'm going to draw this up here. So we're going out to negative infinity, so I actually don't need it on this side. Now, this side stays the same. Anything below the x-axis will be reflected above, but everything above the x-axis just stays like it was. So here, we're going to keep that part going up. Then, we're going to take what was below the x-axis and reflect it above the x-axis, looking exactly the same, just reflected above the x-axis. So instead of it going like this, we're going to now make it go this way, out like that. Approaching this horizontal asymptote. Now, sometimes I get a question that why can this graph here cross the horizontal asymptote when we thought that asymptotes can't be crossed? Well, that's true for vertical asymptotes, but for horizontal asymptotes, they can be crossed as long as they're not crossed as we approach infinity. Horizontal asymptotes have more to do with the end behavior. What happens as we approach positive infinity in the x or negative infinity in the x, so as we approach here we're going out to negative infinity, here we go out to positive infinity. It really has to do with what happens at the end of the graph rather than what happens inside. So here is an example of a graph that crosses its own horizontal asymptote. But as x goes out to negative infinity, this will approach the horizontal asymptote of positive 2. So we're not quite done yet. We're almost done. We've got the absolute value of e to the x minus 2. Now we have to do the last thing. And remember, the last thing always is a translation. 
Um, we're not going to do any translations until the end. Um, well, except in this case, I guess we did a translation, but it was inside the absolute value. Um, anything outside the absolute value, outside the parentheses, we're going to do at the end. So we're going to add 1 to absolute value of e to the x minus 2. So we're going to shift that up one unit. So we're going to take everything here and shift it up. The easiest thing here to do is take the horizontal asymptote and shift that up to 3. And then take this x-intercept and move it up here to 1. But we don't exactly know what x value that is. Uh, so we're just kind of estimating, but it's going to go up to 1 anyway. So somewhere around here. I'm going to draw that up this way. And we should have crossed, since our y-intercept here was at negative 1, we should have crossed that at positive 1, right? Because it reflects. So this one's going to now be up once. It's going to reflect it. It's going to cross it 2. Towards our asymptote. So here we go. Here's our graph of y equals absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1 using a step-by-step -step graphing approach. So I encourage you to use this step-by-step -step graphing approach. It allows us to kind of get an idea of what's going on in each case and what each of these functions might do to another function, and it gets us a really good picture of what happens at the end. All right, thank you for tuning in. Catch you next time.